with Antoine from Ariel Kiteboard Academy. Antoine, what's up? What's up? Uh, we're just taking a little tour of the kite spot, seeing uh, seeing what the lessons are up to, and enjoying this epic, epic, epic view from the water. A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to tour Squamish, British Columbia by jet ski with my good friend Antoine from Aerial Kiteboarding. Seeing all of the students learning to fly for the first time really got me thinking about my early days in kiteboarding and one of the questions that I wrestled with. It's actually one of the most common questions prospective kiteboarders ask, should I fly a trainer kite? And the answer, of course, is yes. So if you pick one up, head out to the local beach and proceed to ask yourself, now what? Fear not, I've got you covered this week. Hey, this is Crystal Vaness with Mac Kiteboarding, and today we're talking about trainer kite skills and how to get the most out of your trainer kite. So if you're already a little bit confused, you may want to watch one of our other videos, what is kiteboarding and should I take kiteboarding lessons? If you already have a trainer kite or you're planning to get one, this is a great video to get started on what skills you can learn on the trainer kite to get you that much further ahead before your kiteboarding lessons. Uh, I love trainer kites. I have two or three floating around the world somewhere and uh, they're great to give to your friends for practicing kiting, to introduce them to kiting. They're just a fun thing to take out to the beach or the park and just entertain yourselves and your crew. But the best thing about a trainer kite and what we're going over in this video is the amount of skills that you can learn with it before you get onto the big kite or before you get into your kiteboarding lesson. So you'll be saving yourself a ton of time and money if you take the time to practice your trainer kite skills. So we're going to talk about setup, flying the kite, uh, improving skills and control, one-handed control, flying with your eyes closed, circles, loops, and of course, practicing water starts and board starts on your trainer kite. First things first, of course, you set up the kite. So put the kite down in the sand or in the park, put a weight on the trailing edge of the kite. The leading edge is where the cells open up to take in air uh, that, that flies the kite. And then the trailing edge is the edge closest to you when it's on the ground. You unroll your kite, put a weight on that trailing edge or some sand, and then of course unroll your bar straight upwind of the kite. Uh, be careful not to put tension on the lines. You don't want to accidentally launch it while you're setting it up. Once you've unrolled your lines, go back and check the lines. Make sure that there's no crosses or tangles. Uh, check the bridles. There's a lot of little knots there and you want to make sure that there's nothing tangled up in the knots before you launch the kite. So once you're good to go, walk up to the bar. Make sure red is on the left, of course. Most trainer kites have red and black or red and blue. And this red on the left roll crosses over to kiteboarding. So it's a good one to start remembering now. Now you can put on your safety leash. Most trainers have a wrist leash like this one here. Once you've got your safety leash on, very important step, uh, pick up the bar and walk back upwind. Give it a couple tugs and it should, if it's windy, catch some wind and take off. Trainer kites take anywhere from half an hour to a few hours to fly proficiently. Uh, and some days are better than others. You know, if the wind is consistent, you'll have a better session on your trainer kite. Uh, don't be discouraged, just keep flying it. Get out there a few days in a row. Try it in different conditions and just focus on continuing to progress. Now we're working on just getting comfortable flying your kite and you want to be flawless at kite control before you get in the water for your kiteboarding lessons. Definitely gonna start with the basics of flying the kite. Once you've launched it, your kite should be a 12, just above you, you can stand comfortably holding it. Uh, and then you can start playing with that, uh, the clock, you know, 12 is above you, three is the ground, nine is the ground. So you can start your control with like, can you slide at one and hold it there for 10 seconds or 30 seconds or a minute or two or just above the ground. This is a great one to learn for preparing for launching and landing. Can you control your kite just above the ground? And again on the other side with 11, 10 and just above nine. If you accidentally crash your kite, no big deal. Just uh, run back to the kite, set it back up and go again. Um, try not to crash your kite straight down wind of you, of course, because you don't really want it to take off again while you don't have the bar in your hands. That's why, of course, it's important to make sure you're kiting in an open area. Uh, if you're in a park, or on a beach that there are no trees a few line lengths downwind of you. You really want to have room to let go of the kite if you need to and uh, to run around and play with it without worrying about running into trees or people or telephone poles or anything. So once you have basic kite flying down, you can start doing little figure eights. So you can do just the little figure eight loops above you, but what you really want to practice, which crosses over to your water starts, is figure eights 
side to side. So you want to do figure eights from 12 to 2. This simulates a water start. And then figure eights from 12 to 10. Uh, you can start slowly. Again, fast loops can throw you off. But we'll definitely be getting into trying to get a bit more power out of your little figure eights for when you're practicing the water start. For now, start with gentle movements uh, and just trying to get as controlled as possible. The next thing you'll want to practice is moving comfortably with the kite. So obviously when you're kiteboarding, you might be walking up and down the beach with your kite, you'll be in the water moving around, so try walking with your trainer kite. Walk upwind, try walking downwind, across the wind, uh, and then if you want to get a little crazy, try running with it. Um, when you're riding on the water, you're going to be riding at a pretty fast speed, so you might get a bit of an idea of what that's like if you take your trainer kite and run with it. You know, the kite starts reacting differently when you start moving, just as a larger kite. Uh, and so it's a great way to start getting comfortable with what that feels like. Now, one-handed flying is actually a little more difficult on a trainer kite than it is on a big kite because you don't have that center set of lines that balances the bar. But one-handed flying on a trainer kite is another great skill to practice because you'll be that much more comfortable with it on a full-size kite. So, grab the bar in the middle. Uh, on a trainer kite, if you let go with one hand and you have your hand on the edge of the bar, it's just going to loop and that's not going to be that much fun for you, I assume, unless you're into that kind of thing. So grab the kite with one hand in the middle of the bar, let go with your other hand and walk. You can even try picking something up like a rock or a coconut or a board to practice getting ready to enter the water when you're kiteboarding. You're usually walking with one hand on the kite and one hand on your board, so try carrying an object, walk with the kite obviously try it the other way too because you're never kiting in just one direction. If you have access to like a snowboard or a skateboard uh, or a mountain board, a sandboard, you could actually try your trainer kite on one of these boards. It's definitely a little fun. Probably wear a helmet. All right, now we want to try and get some power out of this trainer kite because this is how we're going to get started on the water. So there's a few things you can do. You can try little kite loops on the trainer kite. Now prepare yourself because there will be a lot of pull from the kite. And as always, when you try and loop the trainer kite, uh, make sure you complete the loop. You don't want to crash your kite at full speed into the ground. It pulls you pretty hard, but it's also really bad for the kite and you don't want to break it. And don't be worried, when your lines are crossed, because you loop the kite, you can uncross it by doing another loop the other direction or just spinning under your kite quickly. The only thing to caution on here is if you're practicing looping the trainer kite, this is not a safe skill to practice on the beach with a larger kite. It generates too much power and you could throw yourself. So remember, that's a train a kite skill, that is not a big kite skill. Maybe you can do it on the water once you're more comfortable, but don't loop your big kite on the beach. Now lastly, and this is going to be the most valuable one for transitioning into your kiteboarding lessons, once all of your basics are on lock and you can fly your trainer kite comfortably and proficiently, you can start practicing water starts on the trainer kite. Now a water start will be moving your kite from 12 to 2 or 12 to 10 in an aggressive power stroke. So to practice that with your trainer kite on the beach, you can try sitting on the sand, uh, extending your front leg and bending your back leg a little bit. And then uh, you do a power stroke. Now, if you get enough power and you have enough wind, you should be able to put yourself onto your feet with a power stroke. So practice that several times and you'll notice how your body moves to stand up and counterbalance against the pull of the kite. Remember that because you'll be doing that in the water as well. Uh, once you're able to practice your power stroke, going one direction and get comfortable with that kite pulling you into a standing position, sit down and do it in the other direction too. For me, water starts was one of the hardest things about learning to kiteboard and it took me a few lessons on just water starts to get it. Um, I probably could have spent the time on the trainer kite and saved myself a little bit of trouble, but if there's one thing that I can advise you today if you're working on a trainer kite and preparing for your lessons is to practice your power strokes and get really comfortable with that feeling of the kite controlling your body weight, lifting and moving you. At some point in kiteboarding, your kite becomes an extension of your body. And if you can get that comfortable with it before you even get into the water and on your board, you are going to breeze through lessons. All right, so those are the skills to practice with your trainer kite. Just generally flying the kite, learning the different positions of the clock, practicing your figure eights, practice your little loops, move with the kite, fly it one-handed, and of course, practice your water starts with the kite. So if you need a trainer kite, check out the link in this video. It'll show you some of the ones that Mac Kiteboarding has available for sale. Um, and if you know some friends that are wanting to learn to kite and you want to lend them your trainer kite, send them the link. We would love it if you'd like this video or subscribe to our channel. And if you have any ideas for content for us for the future, please post it in the comments below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Chasing the Dream.